Hello everybody, in this lab we are going to learn about sequential circuit design using flip-flops in Xilinx. Right? So like the last few uh, lab uh, videos, in this I am going to introduce two new concepts to you. One is flip-flop code, writing a flip code for flip-flop in Verilog and how to set up a test bench for sequential circuits. These are the two new concepts we are going to learn in this lab okay so firstly uh, before the flip-flops I'll just uh, speed take two minutes to explain you how to do a latch okay for a D latch we know it's just a combinational circuit we know uh, latch doesn't have a clock right so latch, if you see the circuit here there is no clock here it is just a pure combinational circuit you have an input D uh, you have an uh, enable uh, signal so whenever enable is high whatever is the value of D will get reflected at a Q there is no clock so it will be uh, whenever enable is high whatever happens to D is going to be reflected at Q and the complement is available at uh, Q bar so this in the in this code uh, it, it's simple like we did in the last uh, few combinational codes what we learnt. So D latch is also going to be similar. Input is D. You have an enable Q and Q bar. And then there are three wires DN, W1 and W2. These are the wires DN, W1 and W2. And then you write a uh, gate level modeling here. So I'll upload this uh, uh, particular PDF also. So you can just see uh, the, the code is not complete. So you need to write in between whatever is missing here so this is a home assignment for you so you can make a uh, latch okay so today what uh, our focus would be on flip-flop so now the first uh, flip-flop which we are going to uh, see is the D flip-flop now for a uh, D flip-flop what are the inputs there are only two inputs which is D and the clock and what is the output Q now you see the major difference which is going to come between a combinational circuit uh, and a sequential circuit is that the Q is a uh, register. Okay, why so? If you think over it, because Q is a memory cell, right? So the memory cell, so since it's a memory, we write it as a register Q, right? So that the value is stored here okay it has got a storage it's it's a storage cell here so that is why we declare output not as an uh, simple d uh, variable but as a register q so that is the one difference major difference so since you have re uh, declared it as a register we also need to uh, declare one more statement we have to give the condition that when will q be updated right because it's a register now now when will it be uh, updated so that uh, uh, statement is given here always at the r at the rate positive edge of the clock that means any time there is a positive edge of the clock the Q will be updated so these are linked statements okay so it means that uh, the Q will not be updated always it, it is only uh, it will be updated based on your inputs whatever code you write here only when there is a transition of the clock from 0 to 1 that is a positive edge out here so the code is simple for D flip-flop begin and uh, Q uh, is D right whatever is the value of d will get you know stored into q during the positive edge of the clock so this is a simplest way of writing and code for d flip-flop okay so now how to write a test bench right you used to give force constant method or you used to give an you know, test but in those uh, you you know uh, that won't work here because you have to uh, specify the clock and the cycle and the frequency and things like that so let's see how to modify so once you make an uh, test bench for the d flip-flop from that code you will you will get these these are the standard things which you will get which it will with which xilinx will uh, make automatically only you got to amend the uh, test setup here okay so uh, so if you see the test setup here what uh, I have done is clock is initially zero right then repeat nine means repeat it nine times what is to be repeated that is hold for 10 nanosecond and then make clock is equal to clock bar then and I rip, keep repeating it so it will generate the clock okay clock is equal to clock bar again uh, uh, it will wait for uh, 100 nanosecond again make clock is equal to clock bar right so it has become clock bar once from 0 to 1 again clock bar means it will come back to 0 so this is how you generate 
generate the uh, clock out here right and then we'll also have to give d so i have arbitrarily given a uh, d signal here repeated six times and i have given period as 225 just like that so that whenever the clock edge is going high the d is more or less stable it is not changing during the clock is going high because that is likely to induce error so you have to be careful with that so i've just made this uh, signal so so when i uh, do the test and this is the kind of waveform which i will get so uh, initially uh, uh, there is no rising edge of the clock so you have some junk data here in the queue this is the first rising edge of the clock so if you see d is zero so the output is going to zero here right it is going to remain zero 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 till here till here this is the second edge of the uh, clock now if you see d is one so it will get and the output q is going to be get slave to d that is it's going to go high the next clock it is again d is zero it is coming zero the next clock d is high it is going high so this is the simulation plot of the d flip-flop okay now if i go ahead then many d flip-flops we know we require an uh, reset pin also so that initial value we can set it to zero so whenever there is a requirement we need to reset it to zero so what now if you see uh, the uh, again output register is Q a reset is is a normal input which is there then output is a register Q now the Q has to change with respect to the positive edge of the clock and also an or positive edge of the reset so it will check for both these conditions if anything happens either positive edge of the clock or positive of the um, uh, reset signal the output is going to change so it will check for both these conditions now q is dependent on clock as well as the positive edge of the clock as well as the positive edge of the uh, reset okay now i write a program begin if reset is equal to one q is zero this is one one bit and the value is zero so q will become zero else q is d that means if the reset signal is not uh, one then q will be d okay again if you see it doesn't mean that q will always be zero okay it is again driven by these conditions positive edge of the clock positive edge of the reset so whatever is written here okay this change will happen if one of these conditions happen right so it, it is not that if you write it here so you have to be so obviously if the reset is uh, one it will be zero and if it is zero here okay q will be d during the positive edge of the clock only right still these conditions will always stand good so so this is how we can make a flip-flop with reset okay now uh, for the uh, test bench what we need to do is now since there is a clock here i have given the clock and d i have not changed only i have put the reset it is, is equal to zero initially and i after 600 nano i am putting the reset to one okay see so, so i am going to change this i have just put a uh, dummy this is just a one test condition you can do make your own uh, test bench i am just giving you an example where the reset is uh, set to one after 60 nanoseconds so if i see the waveform here so initially for till 600 nanosecond okay whatever the initial thing with the clock the data uh, data every positive edge of the uh, uh, clock the d input is being uh, replicated to q but what happens after 60 nanosecond you see the reset signal has gone high so if it has gone high that means the output irrespective of the clock and data it is going to remain zero so as long as the reset is high it, it is going to remain zero during the positive edge of the reset this has triggered this okay so this is how we make a d flip-flop with a reset now uh, let me see, uh, ask you something see uh, we could have an uh, a reset bar also right so this is the waveform which i require okay this is going to be high here and after so when whenever it is uh, high here right the reset bar is uh, high here okay uh, it is going to be the signal is going to be this is reset bar now okay the signal is going to uh, the output is going to follow the uh, d based on the clock signal whenever it, the clock is triggered from 0 to 1 but when the, the, the reset signal is going 0 i want the output to be 0 so essentially although it's written reset here it is a reset bar here now what is the modification which i need to do in my code 
सो थिंक ओवर इट है ना इट इट इज प्रटी सिंपल जस्ट थिंक ओवर इट वॉट 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 इज कमिंग इन यूर माइंड ओके सो लेट मी टेल यू हाउ दिस इज गोइंग टू वर्क ओके सो वेन एवर रिसर्ट इज जीरो सो आई एम जस्ट एन गोइंग स्लो सो दैट एन यू कैन थिंक ओवर इट है ना ओके इट्स इट विल बी गुड इफ सम सोल्यूशन कम्स टू यूर माइंड ओके वेन एवर द रिसर्ट इज जीरो the output should go to zero okay so let me give a solution now for that so uh, first of all if you see this is negative edge like the reset has to be triggered for a negative edge out here right so now i am going to write instead of positive edge i am going to write negative edge reset because this has to trigger and reset a uh, signal here Re it has to reset the flip flop to zero so it is a negative edge so i write negative edge out here right and the second thing which i need to write is if reset is equal to zero q is equal to zero that is this is the condition now reset initially we wrote reset is equal to 1 and positive edge now we are going to write reset is negative edge and uh, negative edge out here always and then reset is equal to zero so these two modifications will ensure that my uh, uh, it is become a d flip flop with reset bar pin okay so this is a d flip flop oh, although i have written here uh, reset here this is a reset bar pin okay which is available to here now you can also make an a negative edge uh, flip flop okay so accordingly you will have to uh, change the code okay you can if you write a negative edge clock here it will simply the q will become b only during the negative edge of the clock so that is the only change which you require so all types of combinations you can do you you can write an preset uh, pin you can make a set pin so you uh, know you can do all those things okay so it is it is pretty simple now uh, in the test bench also i made a small modification so initially i had given uh, uh, reset as uh, uh, one and then repeat it two times so that during the first phase okay uh, you have the uh, signal following the uh um, the d uh, q is following the d based on the clock and then subsequently it is getting a reset so i have just made if if you change uh, reset is equal to 0 then during this phase it will be uh, the output will be zero and here it will start following the output so you can do all this combination so now i hope uh, with these examples now you are an uh, uh, you know enough to make different kinds of test benches okay so now the i am going to define you the problem statements i am not going to give any demo here because you all now become expert in lt spice and xilinx you have done enough uh, experiments so this is going to be the last experience uh, last experiment for this course so you will have to do these problems yourselves okay so a uh, first problem is to make a two bit binary counter okay make a d uh, flip flop and take it as an instance uh, and then make a program and make a test bench and you have to run the test bench in the test bench the only variable is going to be the clock right you don't have to give d here because d is already a part of the circuit you just have to give the uh, clock so you can give some clock and see that the output is uh, and there is going to be a uh, q a and you also have to modify your code for d flip flop to include q a bar also q and q bar should be there in your code initially uh, in the code which i flashed you there was only q output now there has to be one q bar output also that also has to be a register okay and then you got to define q bar okay you can define q bar as just an uh, inversion of q but that also has to be an, a register okay so you do that so once you do uh, you modify the d flip flop you can make the circuits there will be only one input which is clock and then you will have to see whether it is working like a binary counter you give a clock and run the simulation and ensure that there are two flip flops so you you will you know see that it is working as a binary clock and you know, qa and uh, qb right so uh, the next which uh, problem statement for you is is to design a t flip flop okay so you're going to make a t flip flop out of that d flip flop you're going to use an xor gate you can do gate level modeling or data flow modeling whichever is comfortable which you feel comfortable right so you give uh, t out here now uh, in the test bench you got to uh, uh, first give t is equal to 0 for some time and run the clock and see that whatever is the uh, out 
output remains the same and then you uh, activate Q to T to high and see that it is toggling with every clock cycle it is toggling okay the prob third and final problem statement is design a JK flip-flop using D flip-flop so and I am not I am not flashing the circuit out here you know how to make a JK flip-flop using a D flip-flop so that's been covered in the theory class so just go there pick up that circuit uh, make a uh, circuit out here and then give some test conditions of JK is equal to 0 0 1 1 okay uh, 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 all the four conditions of JK uh, and then uh, you give some clock and, and just analyze it okay so so this is all uh, for this and uh, hope uh, this course uh, has been interesting for you and this is the end of uh, this uh, particular capsule on where uh, on uh, DD lab so thanks a lot uh, and hope uh, you will do well in your final exams also